Dobry wieczór wszystkim, I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic today. I'm Mystical, and I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. But we're gonna have quite a bit of recap news in this one as well, just because we haven't had a news video in a while. Anyway, enough of that. As usual, you have chapters down below to skip to any specific part of this video that you might be most interested in. And with that being said, Let's get right into it. So the very first thing that we have is the brand new power options inside V74. We're going to gloss over this one as it's a recap piece of news. But from Luna on Twitter, Meta seems to be rolling out a new change on V72 Plus. I actually received this one as a V74. That moves the power option screen to be an overlay of your current VR slash MR space rather than teleporting you to a black void. I believe they actually tested similar for home environments 10 plus versions ago, but it was reverted. This is a very good quality of life improvement as teleporting you to a black void seriously takes you out of your immersive experience. Having that menu show up there, even if it's you, you know, slowly getting out of VR or MR or whatever you're in instead of in a black void is a lot, lot better. And to be honest, I'm surprised that didn't happen a lot sooner. What also should have happened a lot sooner, but I understand why it didn't. There's a lot of implications here is Meta's pass-through API. And Meta's support page suggests that this pass-through API is now imminent. Meta's support website now describes a headset camera permission for Quest headsets, suggesting the pass-through API is launching soon, meaning apps and developers could finally receive access to your pass-through cameras. That is, if you allow this permission. This is brilliant, and it would allow applications to access a whole new array of things inside your space, meaning you could interact with things here. Games and apps could potentially be using their own AI algorithms to recognize things inside your space and merge your titles with it, bringing a whole new level of immersion into virtual and augmented reality. Because yes, virtual reality as well. If you had the furniture in your space actually be furniture inside a virtual reality experience, you could walk up to it, place things on it, etc., etc., and actually, you know, feel the physical thing there. Meaning that yes, this could also be helpful in virtual reality. Meta announced this back at Kinect 2024 in September, saying that it will enable all kinds of cutting edge MR experiences. Now, just over five months later, a Meta support page just went live describing a new headset camera permission, which allows an app to access the real time pass through camera feed from the front of your headset. There's going to be people that love this and there's going to be people that absolutely hate this. If you ask me, as long as this is a permission and as long as you, the user, get to grant it, well, then there isn't really anything wrong with it. What's also really cool is Meta's avatar system. And not the one that we currently have, but their photorealistic one. The one that they've been working on for quite some time. We've spoken about this before, and we've even had talks about Meta potentially being able to generate these photorealistic avatars or codec avatars from selfies. Well, now they've brought it up to a whole new level by being able to generate a scan like this from just for selfies, which that's pretty incredible if you ask me. Meta researchers built a large reconstruction model, an LRM, that can generate an animatable photorealistic avatar head in just minutes from four selfies. Meta has been researching photorealistic avatar generation and animation for more than six years now, and its highest quality version even crosses the Uncali Valley. One of the biggest challenges for photorealistic avatars to date has been the amount of data and time needed to generate them. Meta's highest quality system requires a very expensive specialized capture rig with over 100 cameras. The company has shown research on generating lower quality avatars with a smartphone scan, but this required making 65 facial expressions over the course of more than three minutes. And the data captured took multiple hours to process on a machine with four high-end GPUs. And the very first codec avatar system, that was actually really cool. That was essentially a sphere full of cameras that was able to generate that avatar, which is awesome. Now, in a new paper, researchers from Meta and Technical University of Munich are presenting a system that can generate an animatable photorealistic avatar head from just four selfies, and the processing takes a matter of minutes, not hours. So this obviously isn't going to be as high resolution of a scan as a rig that is essentially a sphere full of high resolution cameras, but it is still really, really cool seeing them be able to do it. Of course, 
Apple does something quite similar with their photorealistic avatars on the Vision Pro, but Meta has been working on a way for basically anyone to be able to access this without having to pay the $3,500 for a Vision Pro. So this is pretty cool. I mean, I can see this working out for people that actually do video conferencing, etc. inside virtual reality or augmented reality, have, you know, the characters show up in your real space here in augmented reality. That would be pretty cool and definitely make it more human-like than having an animated cartoon avatar that, well, people have been hating on for years now. So that would be really, really cool. Can't wait to see this one in action. But I'd say it's still going to take a while for this one to actually arrive to us consumers, especially since there is still processing power involved that uh, not everyone has. Talking about research, this is one really cool piece of tech. So Meta says suppliers across the world are now heavily pursuing producing optical grade silicone carbide, the wonder material that made the Orion AR glasses prototypes relatively wide field of view possible. In case you don't know what Meta Orion is, it's Meta's smart glasses that they showed off during Connect, And it's not like the Meta Ray-Bans, which I actually have back now. Uh, these ones that they currently have on sale for us consumers are essentially just glasses with cameras, speakers, a smart assistant, and they're really cool and work really, really well, but there's no smart HUD involved here. No heads up display. You can't actually see anything. So these aren't augmented reality glasses. They're just smart glasses. What they showed off during Connect were actual augmented reality glasses. The Orion prototype presented at Meta Connect during 2024 stunned the world by achieving what no other fully integrated transparent AR device in true glasses form factor has has ever has a relatively wide field of view, 70 degrees diagonal. Other AR glasses that are like this usually cap out at about 50 degrees diagonal. So 70 was quite a big boost here. To reach this relatively remarkable wide field of view, Orion uses silicone carbide lenses. The primary bottleneck for the field of view of transparent AR is the refractive index of the lens. And silicone carbide has the highest of any known visible transparent material, 2.7, compared to 1.8 for glass. As such, Meta describes silicone carbide as a wonder material for AR. So now we can see other companies are trying to get onto that bandwagon and get their hands on silicone carbide so that they can create AR glasses that compete with Meta's field of view. Because of course, field of view in these things is going to be quite important. If you have just, you know, smart glasses and a tiny little square in the middle where you can see things and then you look to the side and all of a sudden there's like a cutoff of, of the square, well, that's not really good. That, that That's just going to throw people off. So the wider the field of view, the better for consumers. It's really cool seeing other companies finally pursuing this now that Meta has pushed that envelope a little bit. You know, now others are going to try try and match it, which ends up being better for us. Okay, now back to V74 for a little bit. As Luna has also posted, Meta seems to be starting a new phase for their internal, employees only, Horizon Hyperscape Photoreal Beta, following the Home for Holidays testing phase. So we can see in the strings here, enabling data collection allows our team to access captured data to improve Hyperscape. This includes viewing input and other results, and sharing within internal tools, such as workspace. This cannot be undone. You have reached the maximum limit of max captures hyperscapes. You can't capture a new environment until deleting an existing completed hyperscape. So it looks like Meta here is allowing internal employees to capture their own hyperscapes, which is a really cool piece of technology, by the way, that Meta has that essentially allows you to create photorealistic environments by, you know, generating them from the headset. So that's really, really cool. I can't wait to see more of these. They actually opened it to people so you can go in and check out the few hyperscapes that they have in there right now. But uh, being able to actually generate your own would be incredible. Incredible. Imagine being able to like take your own space, your room or whatever, and throw it into VR chat being actually photorealistic or, you know, throw it into Blender, play around with it a little bit, make objects actually touchable. It, it seems really, really cool in my head and meta moving along with this. Inzai has apparently paused their Lumi project, which was a very interesting project that they had that allowed for eye tracking on the Quest 2 and Quest 3. So what Inzai actually was is instead of using cameras like most other headsets use, is it used photo sensors and then measured the reflective index of infrared light from your eye, since different parts of your eye actually report different intensities of infrared light. And it would do this at 1000 hertz. It was also a lot less expensive than the other technologies, costing the user just about $160. So it was supposed to be really good. 
but apparently now Inzai has moved away from this and is going to be focusing on MR and AR glasses. So unfortunately, it seems like we aren't going to see this technology expand on the Quest, but we may just be seeing it in future AR and MR glasses. So at least it's not entirely gone. Either way though, we do actually have other DIY projects that you guys can jump into in case you feel like it that offer eye tracking for the Quest 2 and Quest 3. Of course, it requires you to do a little bit of tinkering, but I have seen from my staff on Discord that this does work really, really well, as they have managed to get it to work. So in case you're a DIYer, you might want to look into those. As well as that, I think this is a great time to pitch our Discord a little bit in case you guys want to check out some movie nights, in case you want to join Basil's avatar workshop for VR chat, make sure to check out the Discord down below. The new Samsung headset that uh, they're working on with Qualcomm and Google is apparently reportedly going to use Sony's brand new 4K micro OLED displays. We may know what resolution and display type the new Samsung headset is going to be using. So far, Samsung has officially only said that its upcoming headset, which will be the debut of Google's Android XR, will feature state-of-the-art displays, but the company hasn't confirmed what kind or what resolution. Now, South Korean news outlet The Elec reports that Samsung will use Sony's new 1.35-inch 3552 by 3840 micro OLED display, the same being used in Sony's own SRH-S1 standalone headset. Sony also supplied the micro OLED displays used in the Apple Vision Pro, the first headset to feature high resolution micro OLED displays. But that earlier display used by Apple is a 1.4 inch with a resolution of 3660 by 3200, lower resolution and slightly larger. So this should potentially help Samsung make their new headset not just higher resolution, but also smaller. So it's going to be quite interesting to see that happen. However, it may not all be good, as we also could know the launch date being in Q3 and the price, which is supposedly going to be quite high. Samsung's headset will launch in Q3, South Korea's Business Post reports, with a low production scale that suggests a very high price. So far, Samsung hasn't told us much about this headset, but Business Post's report suggests mass production of the components will begin next month with an annual production target of 100,000 headsets, with a goal of releasing in the third quarter of this year. That would mean July, August, or September. The production scale of just 100,000 headsets per year, if accurate, would likely result in Samsung setting a very high price. For comparison, the annual production scale of the Vision Pro has been widely reported at less than 500,000 units, and that headset starts at 3.5 thousand dollars. I really hope this one isn't exactly true as, uh, you know, people ridiculed the price of the Vision Pro quite a bit. And even though the Samsung headset is going to be debut Android XR is supposedly going to have controllers, is going to have a higher resolution. I still think if that production scale is that much lower than the Vision Pro, and they set the price tag that much higher than the Vision Pro, this could be a significant flop. And if it does end up being a flop, uh, more companies might not want to, you know, try where others have failed. So hopefully that really isn't the case. Either way though, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me guys, I hope you guys like this one. If you did, please leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this one works too. But let me know why down below. If you guys like this one, please do, let me know what you guys think about these pieces of news down below. Start up a conversation. I love reading your comments. And as usual, thank you so much to all the Patreons supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. Seriously, much love. You are what makes this all possible. If you guys want to check out the Discord and Reddit, links are down below. And as usual, if you want to be different, and as usual, if you want to be notified which content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack that like button with your different bell. And see you again next video. Peace. Well, is it this just? Spot for some quality gaming. <laughs>